app, please state your name, followed by the pound sign. Then to the conference. Uh, do you remember what happened last year in terms of uh, water spouts? Did anyone see any on TV, on the news, or anything? I'll see a show since this is WebEx, but I assume a couple people did. You were on the news. Oh, yeah, on the news, right. <laughs> I don't know. Here, the uh, the, the water spout, and then I do that is because in the in the last 19 years of studying this phenomena, I have never seen so many reported water spouts. Uh, we have highest yearly total of 187, at least minimum, uh, confirmed water spouts. This breaks the old record of over 94 water spouts back in 2003 had the highest one day total of over 30 water spouts. It breaks the old record of 26 water spouts in one day back in 1996. That day in 96, I was working the, the moon desk and we were getting numbers like 26 uh, reports. I was I was hanging off the walls. But on say in 2012, I was going berserk. But we also had the longest outbreak period of seven days in a row, this very old record of six days in a row back in 96, when I was working again, and uh, 2003. Also, it's the most photographed uh, year of over 186 events, at least, that's photographed. And those, uh, I'm sure there's way more than that, but the ones that I were able to collect, uh, we had 186. And back in 2003, we had 67. People have cameras on their cell phones, and only natural. So last year, a major media event on several occasions. Uh, and from uh, just a few examples, public uh, public radio, uh, national news on NBC, reviewed on the uh, your Weather Channel, Weather Network. And uh, it's just that so many people saw these things, and they made it on national TV and the newsprint and uh, in general. The water spout was seen passing by on the live national TV during an NFL football game in Cleveland. So that was exciting for the fans. Empty seats there, I don't know. I guess the Browns weren't doing too good that day. saw a family of six water spouts in a row over central uh, Lake Michigan. A night, several water spouts seen coming ashore on separate occasions. Now, I don't know if this link is going to work. We'll see. Taken by a storm chaser who I was in contact with. Choppy, but you can see the spray ring the shore. He was on the sand bank and he falls down the sand bank. So get a little, a little bit more. Now, the in interesting thing about this storm chaser, he was actually looking at the SWI output that uh, I provided and went down the lake on that day with a hand. So down the, the sand. Put back.
Another highlight was this is the first time that a 24-7 water spout forecast product, as we mentioned before, was used in any weather center. Uh, it in the books here at the OFPC. I like bird watching excursion boat dodges 10 water spouts on Lake Erie. Advisory or warnings were in the forecast already. Uh, David but still, people go out there and uh, and fish or bird watch or whatever. Uh, another first, and actually the gentleman who issued this is sitting across the table from me, time that a special marine statement was issued for water spouts uh, based on a live webcam picture. And Ashton issued that statement, he's sitting right here. It dealt the first record, though, uh, I heard about four years ago, I believe that Buffalo issued a special marine warning for uh, water spouts based on a webcam pick near Oswego. But the first here. So, did all these water spouts occur? As he, they occurred over every part of the Great Lake, including Superior, where we rarely get sightings. Uh, a lot of the uh, the reports were centered around population centers like Oswego, New York, Cleveland, here in Sylvania, Chicago, New Haven, uh, Michigan. Uh, so uh, this was unprecedented. So do we have such a record year? Okay, I'm going to pose the question to you. Uh, I can guess why we have had such a record-breaking year. Warm water temperatures, I heard. The climate change is it. Guess is there? Twitter. 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 Uh, here said more people looking. Yeah, we've got iPhones. Pictures. Your phones. Keep taking pictures. All right, these are all good guesses. I can tell with the statistics, uh, two, two graphs in one here. Uh, the red lines are the number of uh, one days per year. As you see, it's, it's a, a state statistic, uh, but it did jump up in 2012. We had about 36 days on uh, water spouts being reported, it's actually unprecedented. The blue line, that's the actual number of water spouts that were observed. And uh, that's more unstable, and it really jumped up last year to 186. One to two, three times the, the average. And why? Well, I mentioned about the water temperatures. It was uh, actually a very hot summer last year. And this resulted in the Great Lakes being well above average. This is one ingredient we need for uh, water spout formation. We need to create instability over the water. Uh, in combination with the cooler outbreaks that we were experiencing in August and September, uh, caused uh, tremendous in instability and hence sighting. Someone mentioned about Twitter. That's correct. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, sites. I was able a lot of uh, reports from these sources, and uh, I, I vetted all these reports, so uh, these are not mul multiple reports. It's amazing uh, the use of social media. In fact, I would say that this uh, factor, the meteorological factor, is I think the big reason why last year was such a rib breaking year. It's just easy to report these events. And after it was the first time use of the SWI forecast, the output, and I did provide uh, some with this, including Mayor's, the media, storm chasers, and the other weather centers. I pushed this map through, through a web, and uh, they had access to this. 
Uh, there were several occasions where people told me I got feedback where they used the map, they went to the lake to look for it, and then they were able to uh, get sightings, which then got fed me. So it's a self-feedback mechanism. And that's why we had a record-breaking year. Uh, this was a contribution in coordination with storm chaser groups and individuals. And these are some of the groups I started to uh, coordinate with. Uh, storm Chasers of Wayne County, New York. Uh, Michigan Storm Chasers, Southern Ontario Storm Chasers, and the International Center for Water Spout Research Observers. This is a national government organization, and uh, they have uh, observers from around the world, and it's been growing. And uh, they also provided some reports as well for Great Lakes. A short case study. This is uh, this is the bay where we had over 30 water spouts. I don't know if you were working back then. If you remember, uh, off the walls on that day. One observer actually saw a storm chaser saw 16 water spouts with his own eyes. Again, through mission, uh, I had him go down there. Actually, he's in the southern tip of Lake Michigan, and. Uh, he went down and was just in the right spot at the right time. It's hard to see this map, but 500 millibars, which is the upper map, we are upper trough over the Great Lakes. The surface, the top right map, shows cool air flowing over the Great Lakes, northern Canada. September, perfect conditions synoptically for us to occur. There's our gray spew T. You can see instability. Instability up to 600 millibars. Our both T, even instability. <coughs> and I'm providing a 14Z SAT pick. Uh, as you can see, uh, is there showing on the screen when I move it? Okay, I hope you can see the cursor, but. Uh, on my screen, at least, there's a nice uh, convergent line through the middle of a south convergent line through the middle of Lake Michigan. So there's another convergent line of eastern Lake Ontario that's formed. There's also convection over central eastern Lake Huron, also down in southern Jordan Bay, and over Lake Erie as well. I mentioned that one. Storm check down to southern uh, Lake uh, Michigan. I'm at the uh, national park, but he just stayed there and anywhere, uh, he was there for five hours and he saw he saw seen water spouts with his own eyes. There was another report, and then saw an additional water. Now I mentioned to you before these are happening out there more than we. Take a look at that convergent line over Lake Michigan. This guy, just at that point, with his, with, within his field of view, saw 16 water spouts. What about farther up in the middle of the lake? There must have been all kinds going on. Uh, I did uh, an article in uh, one of the NOAA publications in 2003. I asked for every one water spout reported. There's probably three others that haven't been reported. I think the larger lakes, that's was even higher. And, uh, I won't go into the explanation of that now before another presentation. For Lake Ontario, uh, the some chases of Wayne County uh, went down to the lake and they saw 12 water spouts within an hour period. And also a cottager up in Georgian Bay uh, sent forth to the Weather Network their website and they saw a water spout just afternoon. So in total, we had 31 water spouts that day. All right, to finish things off, I'm going to leave you with Wade's top 10 picks. Something like tonight's show. Number 10, water spout off of Fort Elegant. Lake. Nice picture, sunset, nice rope, cloud, and I thought I'd include that in our top 10. You can just spring down below. 
very characteristic water spout. Off of Oliphant, Oliphant Ontario, which is along Lake Huron, nice developed mature water spout, nice ring. Had to include that. By the way, uh, you notice uh, the white caps in the picture. The way nice ago, when I first started investigating water spouts, the belief was that water spouts only occurred during uh, land or calm situations. Obviously, these things going on during windy as well. Number eight this is from that weather observer who saw 16 water spouts. That's a nice rope-like water spout. This is a picture of spout over southern Georgian Bay. In fact, uh, you can see clear central core in this picture. Next. Uh, fully mature water spout ready to hit a factory uh, of Cleveland, Isle. Include that. Number five, again, Georgian Bay. A uh, clear picture. Some showers associated with it. And it's very dominant. Number four, I have to have this one in. Clear water spout, mature, and boat getting out of the area. This is southern Georgian Bay as well. Now, this is taken by an individual near uh, Faven, or sorry, New Haven, Michigan. It's either a cold front or a gust front. I don't remember. Four water spouts in a row, maybe a fifth one trying to form over here. I had to have this one in there. This is so unique, even though the picture isn't that good, but you know, how often do you see this on national TV floating by? And for one, I did that. Uh, the Fred who saw the six water spouts in a row, that uh, had to be the best one. Very unique. I do have one question, uh, Wade. This is Brian Bukowski here in Winnipeg. You showed the one that was barreling down on the uh, factory. Did that damage to the uh, factory? You know, if you really carefully look at the picture, I think it was probably in the foreground. And the factory was just fine. So okay. there were reports of damage to that to that factory. Okay, thank you. Good. good. Uh, Wade, this is Dov uh, Bentimo here at CMC. Uh, very good talk. Thank you for both the talks, actually. Um, I had a question, I, uh, and this may be related more to uh, dynamics of uh, uh, storms than the water spots per se, but um, uh, in the pictures you presented at the end, there are some that are relatively straight and others that are rope-like. Uh, and, you know, windier, are there, do we understand why certain Water spouts have certain forms and others um, uh, different than under what conditions those happen? Yeah, uh, when you have uh, water spouts that are wider, uh, usually the winds are lighter. I just, when they start to go rope-like, uh, winds are, are, are stronger in general. But this is interesting here because we have a mixture of thin rope-like ones and wider ones. But I've seen wider than this. And usually the ones along land breezes in situations or light and variable, you can get the, those, those are the ones when you get the, the water, water spouts. And those are the ones that are associated with severe weather. Those are, but in general, the more thin and rope like, usually in deer, uh, the, the situation. Thank you very much. Thank you.
SAMPAI